So I'm going to try and take a different approach with this video. As the exam for POB is rapidly approaching, I think I'm going to go and look for some of the more difficult topics that, you know, that students might have difficulties with. And I'll cover some of those. And then if time permits, I'll go back to the easier topics. But one of the topics that tend to give children problem, according to a lot of the CXC reports, would be the information that is contained in the last section of the syllabus, technology and the global business environment. So normally section nine and section 10 tend to give children a little bit more problems due to the fact that section 10 contains a lot of economics. That's the most economics you're gonna get in POB in section 10 and also section nine. So I'm going to start from the back and work my way forward. So I'm going to start with what I think is one of the more difficult areas from objective seven come down. So today I'm going to discuss objective seven in section 10, technology and the global business environment. Section seven says, or oh, and the factors that determine a country's standard of living and its quality of life. So we're going to try and break down some of these right here, some of these on the side here such as a level of consumption, average disposable income, and those things, and how they affect the standard of living. And we're also going to look at the quality of life, such as, you know, the diet and nutrition, birth rate, death, birth, uh, life expectancy, and those kind of things. So we're going to just jump into the, we're going to start with the standard of living, and then we're going to work our way down. So standard of living and the quality of life. All right, so the standard of living and the quality of life tends are uh, indicators. They, they have indicators that shows just how a country is doing on certain fronts. So for example, standard of living. The standard of living measures consumption of goods and services. Uh, there are wide international differences, of course, different countries have different standard of living. And they are normally ranked based on the World Bank. They have four groups for them. You have the high income countries, the upper middle income countries, the lower mid income countries, and the low income countries. Most countries in the Caribbean tend to fall between the upper middle income countries to the lower middle income countries. That's normally our range right here. Upper, lower to upper middle income. We are not, some of us are not, majority are not in low income, a majority are not in high income. We do have some low income, but majority are not there. So, most of the countries that dominate the upper would be countries, the, the Scandinavian countries, every Norway, Switzerland, Sweden, those countries, they tend to be very high. And then you have, you know, the Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa, India, and those highly populated countries that tend to be in the lower bracket. But we're not taking on that for now. We're looking at the standard of living as it relates to the Caribbean. So what are some aspects of the standard of living? What are some indicators of the standard of living? that we can use to measure in the Caribbean. So let's go based on the syllabus and we break only ones in the syllabus. Okay, so the syllabus has them right here. So we have the level of consumption of goods and services. What does that mean? The level of consumption of goods and services. Now, standard of living. Based on the type of goods that you and services you consume and the level, that can determine the standard of living that you have in a country. For example, if you tend to eat, let's say, cheap products, cheap goods, and let's just say, let's just let you know, consumption here is not just eating alone. In economics, consumption normally means, you know, using. If you're using something, you're consuming it. So if you're using a service, you're consuming it. If you're using, if you're wearing a shirt, you're consuming it. So consumption in this case isn't about eating, it's about the usage of something. So the level at which you take part or you use certain goods and services would determine the standard of living. For example, your house, your car. If, if the car you drive is just an old jalopy, if the majority of people in the country drive just old cars or have no cars at all, then that would indicate the standard of living. If majority of people in the country cannot access certain financial services because they just don't have that kind of money, you know, they don't engage in wire transfer and those kind of things, you know, stock, stocks and those bonds and those things, then 
that would suggest that the standard of living tends to be somewhat lower. If you go to you know United States, most European countries, the Scandinavian countries, they would be consuming higher quality goods and services than let's say majority of us in the Caribbean. You know, so you know they have the highest quality foods, they have the highest quality clothing, they have the highest quality vehicles, you know, nice houses, they take part on in, in, in global finances you know they take part in the stock markets and all those things so that would indicate a country's standard of living most countries in the caribbean they don't even have a stock market in the oecs we have one that comes together the eastern caribbean stock exchange each individual country isn't doesn't have a mature enough financial system that would take advantage of these kind of services most small countries don't have luxury brands that are all around so you don't have a, let's say, a Lamborghini dealer. You don't have a, a Volvo dealer in most of these small countries because we don't have that kind of population to utilize those kind of things. So that would determine our standard of living. All right, so if we look at average disposable income now, average disposable income of the population, what does this mean? So it means that when you're working and you get paid your salary, if you have a high amount of money remaining to basically splurge after all your debts have been paid expenses have been paid whatever you're left back with if that's a, a a lot if it's enough to just you know splurge and things that are not necessities splurge and want you know go to the movies you buy you know video games you buy a lot of technology latest phone latest this latest that if you have enough money left over after paying all your debts to buy these things to consume these things the more you have, then the higher your standard of, live, of living tend to be. Because the reality is, most of us, we don't need such a big mansion to live in. But if you have enough money to buy a big mansion, then that would suggest that your standard of, of living is relatively high. So the amount of disposable, so your disposable income is the money you have left back after you would have paid all of your bills, all your expenses. If it's high enough to maintain a certain lifestyle, then that would indicate your standard of living. You see it all the time. Celebrities have so much money. They buy, they actually, you know, build houses for their dogs. They don't wear the same underwear twice. You know, they wear new things everywhere they go. You know, they buy 10 cars because you have disposable income high enough to do these things. So that would mean that your standard of living tend to be higher than someone who after, who working for minimum wage and after they would have paid out their monies, they hardly have anything to survive on. That would indicate a lower standard of living. If you have a small disposable, little to no disposable income after paying your bills, then you have a lower standard of living. Level of national ownership of capital equipment. What this is talking about is they're referring to how much of our nationals, our locals, actually have, who actually own equipment to conduct business. So how much of our nationals have enough equipment or have enough money to buy equipment to conduct certain businesses? In places like Jamaica and Trinidad and Guyana, where you have a lot of you know, natural resources, most of it tend to be utilized by foreign, 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 foreign bodies. In, in Guyana, I think uh, BP are one of them, other foreign bodies are the ones, uh, Exxon are one of them, are the ones who are digging for the oil. You know, in Jamaica, you have the, the, the you have bauxite and all those things. Guyana, Trinidad of oil. Some of these things are utilized by international entities because they are the ones who have the, enough money to own the equipment needed to fully utilize these natural resources. So if the level of national ownership of capital is high, then that would suggest that the standard of living in that country tend to be high also. Again, in Trinidad, a lot of locals actually own a lot of manufacturing plants, a lot of processing plants. A lot of locals own, you know, a lot of, of equipment that is engaged in high level processing. So that would suggest that would be one of the reasons why they might have a higher standard of living than some of the other Caribbean countries, because we don't have people owning, locals owning this kind of capital equipment. Same thing, you say that even in Africa and those places. We have rich in oil, rich in gold, diamond. Most of these mines are owned by a foreign entity because locals, because of the standard of living, can't afford to own such equipment, such capital equipment. So that is why this is an indicator 
of a standard of living. If a lot of locals own equipment, capital equipment, own the fact of production in a country, then that would indicate a higher standard of living. Access to modern technology and level of investment in research and technology. So these two are lumped together. So if your country has access to modern technology, then that would indicate that they, and they utilize this modern technology, then that would indicate that they have a higher standard of living. Some countries, the internet service is so poor, so rubbish. And that's, and if you look at the, these countries, they tend to be the ones who are in the lower income bracket. They are the ones with a lower standard of living. So most of the Caribbean countries, the smaller Caribbean countries, we do have, you know, we have somewhat improved technology our internet service is not too bad our cell phone services are not too bad we have access to a lot of technology so that is why we are not totally low income low standard of living countries we also our governments also invest in techno not in technologies and in research you have caricom you have CAD, you have those things those entities that are involved in investment and they are regionally based institutions so we do invest in technology we do have a certain level of investment and in research that is why we are not so badly off. that is why we are not so low on the standard of living pole so these are things that tend to indicate a country's standard of living if you lack most of these then you would have a lower standard of living but if you have you know a moderate amount of them then you have a medium standard of living but if you, if you have you know the high end then you tend to have a higher standard of living in that country. All right, so what about indicators of quality of life now? So it's about the quality of life. So you might have a, a good standard of living, but your life quality is poor. So these are some indicators of quality of life. So let's look at some of them on the slides this time. So let's see. Uh, standard of living, quality of life. So these indicators shows your quality of life. So you have some positive factors, you have some negative factors. So let's look at each of them one by one. Quality of life, personal freedom. Remember we mentioned earlier that certain economic systems like the authoritarian or the communist system tend to have a poor quality of life for its, for its citizens. So we looked at North Korea, we looked at Cuba and those places where in North Korea, people hardly have personal freedom. They don't have the right to do what they want. So if you lack personal freedom, this is a, a, a negative for quality of life. You have a poor quality of life that negatively impacts the quality of life, the personal freedom. If you can't do what you want, if you don't have freedom of speech, that would bring down your quality of life. Imagine you cannot go outside and say what you want. You know, because you might get locked up, you might get thrown in jail. Now you'd be coward, you'd be afraid to do anything. So what kind of life is that if you're always looking over your shoulders? So that is not good if you don't have personal freedom. If you don't have freedom, that is not a good thing. That would impact negatively on your quality of life. Uh, natural environment. So if your natural environment is clean, not a lot of pollution, you know, if you can go out in a park, you see the trees, they are nice and green and the air is fresh, then that's that would add to your quality of life. Not only the 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 um the air and that kind of thing, but also we're talking about if you can't go out without getting robbed, you know, the environment. If you can't go out, nobody rob you, nobody won't kill you. That again affects your quality of life. If you cannot walk down the street in peace, somebody might rob you, shoot you, kill you then you're going to be living in fear. And as such, your quality of life would be poor. It would be, it would be um, lower than somebody who lives in a country where there's hardly any murders, there are hardly any killings, hardly any violent crimes, no gun-related anything. That country would have a higher quality of life. Just like you said, the Scandinavian countries, you know, Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, those places, they tend to have a higher quality of life because the natural environment is rather pleasant. Uh, benefits from unpaid work such as child care again all of us can live this we can understand this if you live in, in a society where the mother cannot go home after giving birth and have you know child care 
and kind of have um, pregnancy, maternity leave and those things. If those things are not available to the parent, then what kind of quality of life is that? That's a lower quality of life that impacts the quality of life negatively. You should be able to, when you when nature calls, when you're pregnant to give birth, you should be able to go home for your six months to three months, whatever, bond with your child, help to improve the health of the child and those kind of things. If you cannot, if you don't have those things available to you, they affect your quality of life. Could imagine that you have a job and childcare is so expensive that you have to run home quickly to get to you know from a job to get your child from daycare. Or it can't even go daycare. One of your spouses, one of the spouses have to stay home because childcare is so expensive. Quality of life tend to be poor. So these impact your quality of life negatively. But if you live in a country where you know paternity leave you know, maternity leave, paternity leave, father can go home to stay, you know, born with your child. That indicates a high quality of life. If child care is reasonably is available, you know, all your work, your, 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 your job has a daycare system, then, you know, that indicates a higher quality of life. What about leisure time? Leisure time affects the quality of life. If you have it, you have time to kick back, relax, you know, don't work yourself to the bone. That would in indicate a higher quality of life. There are countries in, in the world where you hardly get any time off. I think most Americans tend to work work to the bone, work till the dead sometimes. You go to Europe, you have four day week, four day work weeks. No, you go to France, you work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're good. Places in Italy, you know, you have like two hour back, two hour lunch time, you know, leisure time, they give you family time. That indicates a higher quality of life. But if you're always on your face, have to be working, 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 24-7 working, that's not a good quality of life. You can't enjoy life like that. And of course, this is very important, health facilities. This directly impacts your quality of life. Because if you don't have access to good health facilities, health care, then you actually have a poor quality of life. Diseases that should be extinct are still running rampant. Look at Africa. Ebola is running rampant in Africa. Other than diseases, AIDS is still not under control in Africa. So these things affect your quality of life. You know, you, you die young before you reach your, you know, your, your, your scores that the Lord said that you're supposed to get. So these things would negatively impact your quality of life. But if you have free health care in your country, reasonably good doctors, good facilities, then that tend to, you know, certain diseases that that should not bother you, would not bother you. You know, the measles and mumps and pox and those things that, you know, are thing of the past. They would not affect you as much if you have access to good health care. And of course, education and culture. Education is one of the key engines to getting people out of poverty. Once you're educated, that should be a driver to help you to move from, you know, low income to maybe medium to high income. So education, the quality of, quality of education is a key indicator of the quality of life. I know some countries in the Caribbean, they still have schools where, you know, they still have good schools, bad schools. If you don't do too well in, in, in your exams, you go to a bad school. If you do well, you go to a good school, you know. Not all countries have that. Some countries have straight up free education. You know, you even get uniforms for free. You get your uniforms, you even get your textbooks for free. For example, in St. Kitts, you pay a small amount of money and you get all of your textbooks for high school. You know, you go to the welfare department, you can get free uniforms. So this can help to improve your quality of life because education is key. If you don't have any food, you don't have any uniform, you have no textbook, then you do not go to school, you do not learn. So the population is not enhanced and the country on a whole would not have a higher quality of life. All right, so uh, what else? Electricity, water supply, communications, these are pretty much self-explanatory. If you don't have a good clean water supply, then the quality of life would be poor. A lot of waterborne diseases are out there. You have dirty water, your population gets sick, they cannot function, they cannot work, so therefore the quality of life would plummet. A lot of the ancient civilization, like Rome, Rome was built on the fact that they had clean water versus the barbarians. So the Romans had the, aqua the aqueduct sense of pumping in clean water. So the cities were relatively clean. So water is one of the biggest indicator of quality of life. If you do not have access to clean water, then you tend to have a poor quality of life. Okay, communication again. Some places internet is lousy. You cannot get a cell phone signal to save your life. 
you cannot get online, you cannot really communicate properly, that would affect your quality of life. Information, research, they don't move as fast in that society as they can in another society. So that totally affects the quality of life. And of course, as I said before, all these are the flip side of these. So you have poor diet, infant mortality, that's where your, your, your young ones die relatively young. And that indicates quality of life because sometimes it is also linked to the diet that they have access to. You know, so if you don't have a, a good diet for your, your population, then your infant mortality and your life expectancy tend to be low. Okay, so your infant mortality rate will be high and your life expectancy would be low. These are negative impacts. These are things that affect your quality of life negatively. All right, so these are factors that affect your quality of life and also the standard of living. And that's all you need to know for now in a nutshell. All right, and I was, as I was saying before, some of the, the UN, normally the ones who measure the quality of life, and they use an indicator that you call the Human Deve Development Index or the HDI, the Human Development Index. It ranks all the countries in the world by number as to which one has the highest quality of life. All right, so normally the Scandinavian countries comes in, you know, relatively high. These figures are rather old, so, you know, this would have changed by now. So these figures are rather old. Again, international contrast. There are some countries out there, Norway, America, these are money. These countries have a lot of money. And as such, they tend to be in the high, high income bracket. A lot of the Caribbean countries, you see poor Haiti here in the low income bracket. So, you know, Grenada, like I said, upper to middle. And most Caribbean countries are upper to middle. All right. So that's, that's, that's it for the quality of life and the standard of living in a nutshell, based on the section seven, objective seven, section 10 in the CXC syllabus. So you can run to the syllabus. Again, the syllabus is free and you can download it and make sure that you can match what you need to know with what you already know. So you can go through these things and you get to understand how the quality, what affects, what indicators show the quality of life and the standard of living. So that's it for now for this video. The next video, I'm going to be looking at the GDP and the GNP, the national income. Now, these things tend to trip up a lot of people. So I'm going to go through this one again with a fine tooth comb. All right, so that's it for now. Stay tuned for the other videos.